If you will get better, everything will get better for you. What a clear message that was for me. He said, if you'll change your philosophy, you'll change your habits, if you'll refine your thinking, if you'll change and accept some new disciplines, if you'll turn the corner where you've been in the past, go for a new life for the future, he said, all kinds of remarkable things will happen for you if you will change. Before I met Mr. Shoff, I used to cross my fingers and say, I sure hope things will change. I was hoping the government would change and the tax structure would change and that my boss would change and pay me more money. This would come down. And I was hoping that circumstances would get better. And then I discovered from my teacher that those things are going to continue the same. In fact, all of those things that happen to us is kind of like the wind that blows. But we must not leave our future just to the wind, just to the economy, uh, just to the structure of the way things are happening today. Here's what we must learn to do. I went to work to try to change myself. And I picked up that promise my teacher shared with me, that if I would change, my income would change. If I would change, my bank account would change. If I would change, my future would change. And sure enough, his promise came true for me. Things started working for me, changing my life all those years ago. We don't have to change what's going on out there. That's the wind that's blowing. All we have to do is change what's going on in here. And now there are several ways to do that. The first subject he called personal development. We must learn from personal experience. Pretty simple. Learn from what happens to you. Take a look back over the last few months. Did you make some mistakes? How could you correct those for the future? Take a look back over the last year. Have you done it right or done it wrong? Let's correct it for the next year. Mr. Shope asked me when I first met him, he said, Mr. Owen, how are you doing? You've been out there now six years. And I said, I'm not doing very well. He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. What a simple, swift analysis to my situation. He said, if you keep doing it, the next six years will be like the last six. You don't want that to happen. Let's make the changes. The most successful and wealthiest people all practice these habits on a daily routine. And adding these to your daily routine will contribute greatly to your success. Planning your day actually starts the day before. Set out what you want to accomplish before you even start your day. The last thing you do before coming home from work or retiring for the night is to plan your entire next day. When you plan your day the night before, your subconscious mind then goes to work on your plans and your goals while you are asleep. Sit down with a sheet of paper, notebook, or mobile device and put down everything that you need to do the coming day. Preparing your daily list the night before will clear your mind and enable you to sleep more soundly, which will increase your productivity throughout the day. Now, when it comes to making your daily to-do list, make sure that you're working from the 80-20 rule. If you have 10 items to do on your list, two of them will be more important than the other eight put together. Now, there's two kinds of people to learn from. One is failures. It's too bad failures don't give seminars, right? That would be valuable. Have them tell you how they lost it all and threw it all away, threw their health away and threw their friendships away and things didn't work out well. That would be valuable. But now then we must also learn from positive people that have done well. They've got the health and so we ask them, how did you become so healthy? They've got the skills, so we ask them, how did you become this skillful? They've got the income, so we ask them, how did you get here in such a short period of time? So now here's what's important in personal development. In learning from other people, we learn, number one, by observation. We learn what we see. We watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their disciplines. In business, we watch their disciplines. Second, we learn by what we hear. Learn by listening. And then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lectures. Listen to the teacher. Listen to someone who's got something good to say. And then number three is vitally important on personal development, and that is read all the books, all the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. 
If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. So I would suggest you do the same. Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you. Uh, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. You read something in a magazine, write some ideas, take those out, put them in your journal, keep a good journal the rest of your life, this will serve you well. So I want the same thing to happen to you. Value captured that you can resort to later, go back over it and review it and let it become valuable to you. So that's my first subject, personal development. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills, learn the lessons, take the classes, uh, absorb all that is being taught to you these days. And then later on, of course, you can sort it out, what's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. But the main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say it one more time. If you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same. You'll keep growing. As you look back on a few months, look back on a few years, you won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends telling you. That whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile. Every single study in productivity shows that you will be far more productive in the five or six days that you work if you take one or two days off completely than you ever would be if you worked straight through for seven days. The same applies on a smaller scale in the hours of your day. Taking a small break will clear your head and should give you some fresh thoughts to sharpen your focus. However, don't get too comfortable taking too many breaks or welcoming distractions. Most people spend 50% of their time doing non-work related activities while they're at work. Break the time-wasting habits of browsing social media, checking email, taking long lunch breaks, and chatting with coworkers. Time is your scarcest resource. You must work smarter to preserve it in every way possible and eliminating these time wasters will improve your time management skills and your quality of life. Look at every request for your time as time being taken away from the amount of time that you have to work and the time that you have left on earth. Since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves, we can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission and this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. And he says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Shelf said, here's the secret, Mr. Owen. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my self. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over, and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, Make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income 
And economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity.